we're at the Leap Motor Showroom, the brand new Leap Motor Showroom, to check out their flagship full electric model, the C10. Now, I've already driven this car in Milan, so if you want to see my driving experience in the driving video, linked down below. Today, we're talking exclusively about the tech inside this vehicle. I'm Luke, welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. So let's start by talking about this underlying Leap Motor designed platform. The car actually comes as a plug-in hybrid and also full electric model like the one we're getting here in Malta. Now the very interesting thing here is that the car is using something known as the cell to chassis technology. We're going to talk in detail about in the battery section of this review, but this is similar technology to what we're seeing from Tesla and BYD and now even Leap motor. So let's talk about the electric motor. So we have a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor actually found in the rear of the vehicle. Now, unlike the T03, where we, they went with something very sensible, here yeah, they've actually gone for something quite powerful. 218 brake horsepower, 320 newton meters of torque, which actually results in a zero to 100 kilometers per hour time of just 7.5 seconds. Now, the electric motor, like 60% of the components of this vehicle, is actually made in-house at Leap Motor. Because of that, they're able to pass on these cost savings back down to the consumer. One very interesting thing I found about the electric motor is that it's designed to run for over 600,000 kilometers. Try getting that much out of your internal combustion engine. And you know what? It won't even need an oil change. Let's talk about what I think is the most important component of any electric vehicle, the high voltage battery, found down here, taking up the full length of the vehicle between the wheels. Now, this is a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, and most importantly, it is LFP referring to the chemistry inside the battery pack, lithium ion phosphate, which is different to the NCM, nickel cobalt manganese chemistry, we're used to seeing in most electric vehicles. LFP being the newer of the two technologies. Now, LFP lacks any cobalt or any nickel. There have been disputes, of course, about the mining of cobalt. Well, this car, zero cobalt inside the battery. Another reason I like LFP a lot is because you get a higher cycle life. What's that? That's how many times you can charge and discharge the battery. LFP lasts three times, if not more, than a comparable NCM battery. Now, this car has 400 volt architecture. Here in Europe, this is quite interesting. They actually released the car in China on 800 volt architecture. That actually allows it to charge faster, but now they opted for 400 volts here in Europe because frankly our European charging network isn't up to scratch compared to the Chinese one. Now Leap Motor designed the battery pack, the battery cooling system, the battery management system, everything except the actual battery cells which are coming from one of three suppliers. They've got S-Volt, they've got CATL and they've got Guoshan supplying battery cells for this vehicle. Now the C10 is built on something known as the cell to chassis technology. What's this? So in a traditional, traditional electric car, you've got the chassis and then you've got the battery pack, which becomes part of the vehicle. Here, the battery pack is designed as part of the chassis, therefore offering the structural rigidity of the vehicle itself. The battery pack is not an afterthought, but a design decision from the get-go. Now, of course, we've seen similar technology from Tesla, as we said, and BYD, but now also from Leap Motor. Now, all this fancy stuff means that the battery pack, which is usually separated into different batteries, 
those batteries are grouped into modules and those modules make up the battery pack. In this case, we actually have the battery cells going directly into the chassis of the vehicle. Now, all this actually improves and saves around 15 kilos of weight. It improves the battery layout by around 14 and a half percent. But for you, the driver, the consumer, what's important is that this design decision actually improved the range of the vehicle by 10 percent and reduced the components required by 20 percent, which is one of the things allowing Leap Motor to come in at the price point which they do. Now, we always talk about battery cooling on the channel because this is so important. We've all held our laptop and our mobile phones and they generally get exorbitantly hot while we're using them. Well, that doesn't fare well for the lifetime of the battery. In the C10, we have a battery, a liquid cooled battery system, which is cooling the battery cells to ensure they are always at the ideal and correct temperature. So when the car is charging or being driven, that cooling system is going to kick in to keep it at the ideal temperature. All right, let's talk a bit about charging because there's a few numbers and I know people get a bit confused here. So the car has two charging technologies, your AC and your DC, and they're both accessed from the charge port back here. AC is the top plug, it is the standard type 2 connection. The same standard we see in all the cars on the channel, despite this car coming from China, right? Now on AC, that is what you're going to be charging with at home, and even on a lot of the public network as well, you can charge at varying power levels. So the, one of the slowest uh, options you can charge on is at 37 Kilowatts. If you're on a single phase home supply here in Mota, that is probably the speed you're going to want to go for. Why? Because if you charge faster than that on a single phase with a couple air conditions running in the house at night, you can come close to tripping the meter. So 3.7 kilowatt charger will charge this battery in around 21 hours. If on the same single phase, however, you're able to get more power out of your home, you can charge at the car's maximum 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which is the same like we saw with the T03. There, the charging time drops to 12 hours. However, there is also an optional, so you have to choose this as an option, three phase 11 kilowatt charger. So if you have three phase at home or if you're going to be charging on the public network, which is all three phase, then you might consider this option. In that case, you drop the charging time down to seven hours. If that's not fast enough for you, then there's, of course, DC rapid charging done from the standard, once again, CCS port. Now, the car can reach a maximum 84 kilowatts of charge power, which means you can charge this battery to full in just 40 minutes in that case. Right, let's talk about the range you can expect with this vehicle. So this car has a WLTP range of 420 kilometers. Now, WLTP, you have to remember, is a combination of highway and city driving. Now, here in Malta, we have no highway, so you're going to actually get even better range than that because of our slow city streets. If you're driving this car on the highway, especially in cold weather, then you can expect less range than that. So what is the range here? Well, it actually varies between, say, 235 kilometers, worst case scenario, but all the way up to nearly 500 kilometers on a single charge. What range you're going to get is going to depend on the climate conditions and also your driving style. Now, of course, I've done a real world driving test of this vehicle, not here in Malta actually, but in Milan, where we had both highway and city driving. If you want to find out what range I actually got in the real world, so not of the spec book, but in the real world, you can check out my driving video being linked below. Guys, if you enjoyed today's review, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Big thanks to Maverick behind the camera, the Leap Motor team, for hosting us inside the showroom today. And as always, you, the viewer. If you haven't seen it yet, driving video linked below for the C10. But as always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.